Today I'm going to be painting this picture in Procreate 4 in oils. Hi, Steve Elliott here again. Um, straight in with this one, I've got a grunge brush which I'm really liking now. And I've sort of put a local colour on there of orange. And then I've strayed into it again with a um, putting in lights and shades and just sort of the shadows and now the trees. Now, what I want to do is talk about composition straight away. You'll see in the photo that I took, there's this bright sunlight that's right at the edge of the photo. So although it looked cool on the photo, it, it's totally in the wrong place for the painting. So I've had to move it. I've moved it uh, along to the third. So uh, I don't know if you know about splitting your um, composition into thirds and placing key points of interest along those lines of the thirds. Well, that's what I've done here. I've put the sunlight, as you can see, on the thirds and I've moved things around a little bit. I've moved the buildings and uh, I've moved this fence and, and whatnot. So it's not that I'm um, not paying attention to the drawing. I am, but I'm just moving stuff around. I thought I'd use the um, perspective tool here just to get the pavement lines uh, set up for me I thought that would make it a lot easier to use that tool um, I don't use it a lot but it does come in handy now and again it saves you having to sort of uh, work it all out uh, so I've just sort of used that in that one instance and I've also used the masking tool for the very first time in my painting so what I've done well it's the first time I've used it in a video and I did use it on the line, and the idea is you can make a mask over a layer that you're working on, and then if you paint with black onto that mask, it hides everything. If you use a grey, it sort of starts to um, make it transparent and sort of slightly raise it. And the beautiful thing about this is it's reversible, so or non-destructive. You don't destroy the layer. Or the work you've done you can just keep changing it and you will never lose the original painting that you've done so that was quite quite useful here I used it a few times uh, I'll probably have to do a video with a bit more detail showing you how I, I did that so as you can see I've not sort of gone painting over all areas of the background covering up that orange in this painting as I've done before um, I've let that colour really shine through and sort of just painting over it when I feel the, the need to. I um, roughed in the flowers and the, the fence and the people. Uh, everything goes on a different layer here, absolutely everything. I'm still using a fairly limited palette. I use the perspective tool again here just to make sure I've got that fence going away uh, correctly. And I had to change the shadows. If you look at the shadows on the photograph, they're not the same as in my painting because obviously I had to think about where the new light source was and how that would affect the shadows on the objects and the people in there. Um, you'll notice I've painted... Oh, here we go. In with the people, I'll, I'll come back to what I was going to say earlier. With the people, I always put them in on a, a layer on their own now, and I paint them in as a silhouette initially. I'm finding that really useful just to get a silhouette in there. And look at the flowers, they are really pretty abstract and just a guide to where I want to go. Um, I, I looked at this and I thought, my God, this is even a little bit too loose for me because I, I do like painting loose, but it was just too loose. So I do start to um, tighten up the detail quite considerably in this painting. At this point, I'm I'm very happy with every, where everything's going, but I just thought I'd try some strong colour and I put this blue into the canopy of the street seller's uh, market stand. And I'm thinking, oh, it's too much, man. I like my colour, but <laughs> this is, it's just uh, too much. So that does go in a minute or two. 
I don't know how long I'll leave that on for. Not very long, I don't think. So again, I'm just sort of feeling the way with shapes, moving the photo all the time, zooming in. Um, so try and keep in the colours. If you notice the colours to the left of the store are much more subdued than the ones to the right where the light's hitting them strongly. I'm not bothered about details in the buildings at all. I, I've just, I don't care. It's all about this market store. And I wanted to get the um, detail, I suppose, I, I use detail very loose because uh, there's not much detail, as you know. I'm not, I'm not into that, but um, I wanted that to be the dominant feature of this painting. So I've really not um, put too much detail in at all i make up some branches and things obviously because I, I i thought they would fill the um blank space quite nicely without having to get that detail into the uh, buildings and it would offer sort of vertical lines that would I intersect those horizontal trunks uh, those horizontal lines of the canopy and the way the flowers go across and just tie it all together but quite a bit of colour going off in that foreground tree with the purples and the blues. And um, I do not mend back a, a, a little bit, but not massively. I'm quite happy with how that's all going. And then I start... Uh, one thing I've uh, discovered is if you don't bother too much about detail, like sort of people and sort of secondary figures, as you start to paint in the main details, it leaves little spaces where you can then go in and add your um, finer detail, like these two characters that are going in there. And it was really easy just to compare where they were within the composition and the line of the trees to get them in the right place. So by sort of putting in bigger detail, and by that I mean like the trees and the foreground people silhouettes, it becomes much easier to put in those smaller figures later keep popping that perspective tool on i didn't use it i, I didn't fix the guides so that the the paint brush is locked to it i just use it as a visual just to sort of um make sure that things that are in perspective are going in the right place so that is a tool that i'm using more and more i'm learning how to use it um in a much more subtle way, not leaving it switched on all the time and sort of making it dominate the painting. I just use it very, very sparingly. Now I start to tighten up the shapes on the flowers and even that is um, going to change a lot. I thought, I need to put these boxes in. I know they're not the most picturesque looking things in the world, but the picture just wasn't working without them. I thought I needed something. I didn't want to go crazy on the detail. I thought keep them fairly loose so uh, they don't look as crummy <laughs> as they do in the photo. I just wanted to um, give you an impression that there's some boxes that the flower pots are standing on. Then I start to sort of pick out the silhouetted shapes you notice i've now um getting the reflections on the ground because it was wet and raining and i put in some dark color around the edges just to make the light source pop even more and then i had some highlights on these boxes and this is now where i start to get into what i would call the detail so you, you'll see in a, a second or two I'm still working on the boxes, but I will start to work on the paper that's uh, wrapped around the flowers shortly. I thought I would be starting that around now, but no, I'm still working on those crates and getting in the shadows of those, sort of giving them a little bit more form. But again, nice and loose, nothing uh, too tight there. Putting in a little bit of shadow work, underneath the boxes and now here we go i start to put in the the paper and you can see i'm becoming um more 
more concerned about the detail and the form rather than just splashing on bits of colour here there. I start to pick out a random bits of detail just to um, trick you into thinking there's more detail in there because I don't do it all. I, um, you know, just choose certain bits of it and I will start to think about the lining up of the flower pots and the perspective uh, of the bottom of those pots. You see I'm cutting into them and adding the, the shadow underneath. I put in a little bit more paper there. So it looks as though I'm just sort of randomly going for it, but I'm, I'm really thinking about this, about where the detail's going to go. At this point, uh, for some reason, my iPad would not do the screen recording thing, so this little bit of video that we're looking at now is the actual Procreate export of the video because I always leave that switched on as a backup. So it, 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 it doesn't, it's not too bad. It works out all right. You can see, I think, okay, what I'm doing. There's quite a lot of detailed work here that I would have lost um, because I'm going to start putting a couple more figures to the left, which totally uh, I, I would have lost. But again, I'm using dark colours now working away all all these pretty much all this flower works done on one level these two uh figures that i'm putting in now they're on a le uh, a layer behind the flowers so i can move them around a bit and we're back into the screen recording again now and i'm putting some detail on this padded jacket that this lady's wearing and sort of putting a few highlights on there but these are sort of background figures, so I don't have to go too mad. I'm keeping the colours nice and dull so that they, your eye's not drawn to them as the main feature of the painting. They're just there um, to add a little bit more detail and fill in that blank space. But I do think they add a lot to the painting. I'm really pleased. I, there was no point in this painting where I was really struggling. Sometimes I am fight. I fight it back from the brink. But this one, I think it's because it was such a nice subject. Um, I didn't have a lot of um, trouble getting to be where I wanted this. Um, I did enjoy it. This was another one that I painted mostly in hospital. Um, for those of you that uh, know, I've, I've been visiting my grandson in Birmingham Hospital uh, a few times. I spent the week there again this week. So hopefully he's coming home this week. So he is, for everybody that, that's been following me, I just want to say that my grandson is pretty much on the mend and we think he will be coming home um, tomorrow as this video goes live. So really excited about that because that has sort of impacted this channel a little bit that um, I've not been able to do um, as much as I would like. I've still been fairly active, I suppose. I'm, I'm managing three videos a week, but I've got lots of ideas that are um, really sort of pushing the boundaries for me a bit more and will take a bit more time. I need access to my PC that I've not had in the week. so. Um, hopefully now I'm really going to be able to get a grip and uh, really make things happen because I've just been, um, I won't say ticking over because it's been a bit more uh, work than just ticking over but um, I have had to put things on the back burner a little bit just uh, while we was looking after my grandson and making sure he uh, is looked after and, and well and that is we're getting there now so I'm really looking forward to getting into this um, soon and I've also launched a website which I'm going to be I'll do a video to release that this week I, I wanted to do that last week I just didn't get time being in Birmingham so uh, that's really exciting for me and I'm really looking to looking forward to showing you that um, here we are, look, painting some more figures again on their own layer. I pretty much rub out the original figures that I had there and 
totally uh, rework them. Put a little bit of highlight work that isn't really in the photo. These two characters, I really like these. And um, I wanted to include them. There's a sort of guy there. Looks as though he's probably not um, in the best place of his life, but I wanted him in this painting and the other person chatting with him. So, as you can see, I, I do paint the silhouettes and then carve away and add detail, but not a lot of detail, and I'll change colours of things to make sure that they're not clashing. I didn't want to, an orange jacket blazing away there. I use the add um, I create an ad layer there and use the grunge brush to put some sunlight in on the po uh, on the people and uh, put a little bit more detail in that foreground tree and then I'm going to start working on these two characters because they are kind of the main people in the painting I didn't I kept the face really loose I wasn't I didn't want any detail in there that's not what it was about I'm just sort of sculpting away at these figures. Just getting the, the shape I want. And put painting in shadows now, I suppose, because I'm leaving some of the grungy colour that's under there. That's a word that I'm liking a lot, isn't it? Grungy. And then uh, when I get the... Oh, I, I, put, I don't always go crazy on feet. Sometimes I, I'll leave them and not even paint feet at all. But this time I did... Uh, think that um, I would do it but I painted tiny feet to start with then I had to make them a bit bigger I think they would have fallen over and now you see I'm picking out some highlights I think that's really crucial to the painting and using the ad brush or uh, the ad layer look and putting the highlight on the pavement where it's wet and sign it so that means I've got to do a little bit more once I've signed it it's just sort of Picking out some highlights uh, in the odd place just to make it pop a little bit. I'm going to do something on the fence. There we are. And that is it. So I really hope you've enjoyed this painting. I've enjoyed painting it. Thanks for being with me till the end. If you've enjoyed it, uh, please give me a thumbs up. It's always appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I have lots of videos like this and I would love to share them with you. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.